Lindsay Thoss is that the museum is created with the people of Wales and the Oakdale Workman's Institute was built by and for a small mining community in Monmouthshire over a hundred years ago and it was brought here brick by brick when the institute finally closed. It's extraordinary to think that the foundation stone was laid in a time of crisis. It was the middle of World War I, so this place became a lifeline where people could come to be supported, entertained and educated. Like many institutions of its kind, it's a monument to working class ambition and self-sufficiency. It celebrates a proud autodidactic tradition. Locally known as the Stute, it was the focal point for village life. This concert hall occupies the whole of the first floor. It would have been the venue for entertainment. Concerts, choirs, and drum, and ceremonies. And downstairs, there's also billiards and the reading room. The secretary's office, once an epicenter of activity. I can almost hear the clatter of the typewriter. The room is dominated by the imposing safe that held the miners' hard-earned weekly subs. And finally, the library. Hello, Mallet. Hello. I... So, the seat of learning, here we are. Tell me more about this space. Well, we're in the library here of the Miners Institute from Oakdale. And when was it built and who paid for it? Well, the first stone was laid in 1916 and it was opened then in 1917, which is amazing because it was during the First World War, wasn't it? But it was paid for by the miners themselves. They'd saved a penny a week from their wages and accumulated just over £1,500 and they loaned £3,000 from the owners of the ironworks as well because they wanted to have workers that were self-educated, were sober and they were happy. So they were encouraged by the mine owners? Yes, of course, yes. It must be fascinating going through the collections in these kinds of places. Yes, I mean, starting off you've got the more religious books and then as things go on you've got more political books in the library as well. There's loads of engineering books, so the self-education as well. Then by the 1950s, they allowed children to come in to the library, so there were far more children's books as well. I love looking at the types of books in places like this. We've got this wonderful one, Pillar of Fire. You mentioned the religious books. Have a listen to this. Who is like the Lord amongst the gods? Who is like the glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? That's just the beginning. It's interesting to visit a place like this, uh, to be reminded of this sort of perennial interest in self-education and enlightenment and the love of the word, the power of a turn of phrase that we have in Wales. I mean, self-education has always been something that I think, especially in industrial communities, that you see that they want to strive and to educate themselves and to ensure that their children have a better life, really. Playing games, chess, drafts, Billiards was the most popular thing yeah. here. Were they allowed to gamble on the billiards there? No. <laughs> gambling was definitely a no-no. They even went so far as cutting out the gambling pages from the newspapers. Really? <laughs> so it's not just a library, a seat of learning, it's a hub of the community. Yes, it was the heart of the village.